talk about the end of the world. And anybody who believes that I am man obviously is an idiot. Don't be hoodwinked. Don't be bamboozled. Don't let them run the okie doke on you. Because while they're trying to distract you with all this stuff, they're robbing you blind. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Lily Wachowski, one half of the directing duo behind The Matrix, Cloud Atlas, and Speed Racer, shared a simple tweet affirming her identity as a transgender woman. Rebecca Welsh is the last of the great Hollywood goddesses. Do you think you're sexy? No. I don't N find myself even the littlest bit sexy. Really? But I can pretend. We're here to honor achievement in that category. By giving you a golden idol to worship. <laughs> Kneel before your god, Babylon! I propose that we end the world, but on our terms, an orchestrated apocalypse. One that will cleanse the earth of its population but leave its infrastructure and resources intact. It's been done once before, with great success. And when it's over, we will emerge onto a cleansed earth, one that we can then reboot in our image. And just how do you intend to achieve this? The means of our salvation are already at hand. I give to you a T-virus. Emma Watson, Beauty and the Beast! The first acting award in history that doesn't separate nominees based on their sex says something about how we <laughs> about how we perceive the human experience this is very meaningful to me pop quiz is that a man or a woman i'll give you a few seconds just to ponder this yourself take as much time as you need hit the pause button if necessary you decide for yourself write it down if you need to and then I will reveal who this is. This is Anna Harrison, First Lady of the United States in 1841. Not only the wife of the president, but also the grandmother of the 23rd president. Seems to be all in the family. Let's look at another example. Now let me ask you this, is that a male or a female? Yeah, it kind of has rosy cheeks, I guess. Now, is the hair long or short? Well, this is not hair. This is not hair. This is not hair. That's some kind of bonnet or something, whatever you call that. Look at the hair. Very short male haircut. Now, this is a painting. It's not a photograph, but is that male or female? <laughs> kind of looks like that guy from the uh, Munsters. That grandpa guy. All right, and look at the face, the bone structure in the face. Don't look at the clothes. All right. Is that a man wearing a dress or a woman wearing a dress? This procession is now on its way to the Masonic Temple of St. Ermin to enthrone Mrs. Seaton Charon the new Grand Master of the Honorable Fraternity of Ancient Freemasons. The ceremony will be magnificent and will mark an historic occasion in the annals of the Order. This organization has made Masonic history and the women leaders of the future will come into a rich inheritance. I heard about this party which happened in January 2012 and I thought, well, I have to go see this. I was 
writing a book on young Wall Street bankers at the time, and I wanted to sort of see what happens to these people when they grow up and make it. Um, this group, Kappa Beta Phi, has some of the most successful people um, in finance and on Wall Street in it. And so I wanted to go try to see. So I rented a tuxedo. I, uh, I found out where and when it was, and I, and I walked in. And I, you know, nobody stopped me at the door. And pretty soon I was inside this event that in 80 years of this thing's existence, uh, no one from the outside has ever seen firsthand. And I'm, I'm, look, I'm not going to defend the humor that was told at this party, but this is a, a roast atmosphere, right? I mean, what is a roast without some yeah, right. cutting it's zingers a, here and there? Right. It's, it's a roast, but the people they're roasting are not only their fellow private, you know, um, barons of industry. It's also people like Hillary Clinton, uh, Barney Frank. It's people like the Occupy Wall Street movement. And you have to remember, this was taking place in January 2012, just a couple months after the Occupy Wall Street movement had sort of risen up in, in resistance to the sort of activities of the financial titans. So this was, I mean, it's almost comically tone deaf that you would have these, uh, these same uh, titans of industry putting on drag and, and doing skits and musical numbers and, and mocking people who aren't in their group. It was, it was like the Wolf of Wall Street on steroids. No, you know, it was... exactly. I mean, Look what we've uncovered. It's Giuliani showing his softer side dressed in drag in a comedy skit with Donald Trump. You know, you're really beautiful. The spoof was filmed 16 years ago when Giuliani was mayor of New York for a charity dinner, so it was all in good fun. Oh, you dirty boy, you! Oh, oh! So that's just a typical male face with a typical male haircut. He's wearing a bonnet, some kind of headgear. That's it. Look at the hair is short. It's got a short male haircut. <laughs> some dude wearing a dress. All right. Who is that? That is Martha Washington, George Washington's wife, the first first lady, supposedly. I was reading about Martha Washington. They said uh, not much is known about the early years of Martha Washington. So basically what I'm thinking is uh, this per this was a part-time role for some guy to play. This is just some guy dressed up like Martha Washington once in a while. You know, it was not a full-time job, especially back then. They didn't even live in the White House. Anyway, so it's, it's just a like a fictional character, kind of like they all are to a certain degree anyway. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why are all these brothers going to wear a dress? That's happened to me. Dave Chappelle, another great comedian, said that, you know, in the industry, they tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with, with scripts? <laughs> and, and is that something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for... for uh, I definitely haven't ran into to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have, 
You have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to been challenged, so, you know, I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. I you look said good no to doing that. it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm going to look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you got to know that you're a brand. Yeah. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brand can be diminished, and and you don't you don't want that to happen. So you know, protecting my brand is is definitely a priority. And here come the Cardinals, and from the looks of it, the new Pope is not Turkson. The new Pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee Kavenjane Wallace. saw this one coming. It wasn't a full-time job to do this back then, especially. These days it kind of is, but they've gotten better at the uh, technology and the technique here. But back then, all they just some guy put on this this clothes and, and uh, posed for a painting. That's all it is. That's all that is. Right? It's like a part-time job, maybe once or twice a year. Somebody plays the part of Martha Washington. But now I'm going to venture off into speculation. This is scientifically sound, all right? Trust the science on this one. Right? That's a dude. Now, who could it be? Well, now we're go now we're getting into speculation. I would speculate that it would be a another well-known person, a famous person practicing ritual androgyny for their gods. Although I don't know, maybe you know, maybe it's not. I'm just saying, you know, who is it? Well, who, who, it doesn't really matter, really, but it, it could be somebody high profile. It would make a lot of sense that this would be some kind of uh, Masonic ritual that for them it had significance and meaning. Maybe these presidents have to do a little cross-dressing first and then they can become president. We know that all the actors have to, they have to cross-dress. That's part of the gig, man. And do you think that the country will see the first, the United States will see the first gay president or the first woman well, we president? We already have it with Obama, so let's just calm down. Got it. You know Michelle is a trans. Uh, I'm sorry, she's a what? A transgender. Did you prick my finger? You're such a woman. Who are you the woman? No, I'm the man. But who am I? I'm a tranny. Who is I? What? I'm a man. It's fever, 6G fever. What's a 6G? What the f***'s a Bieber? I don't know. Kinda looks like a girl.
gonna go over the guidelines for a graceful, ladylike entree into society. <gasps> Make sure she's in the back for the group photo. Viola was facing a fate worse than death. Ta-da! Sorry, Mom, I have a strict no ruffles policy. Until her twin brother Sebastian. Where are you going? London for a couple of weeks. What are you gonna do about school? I was kinda hoping you could help me with that. Showed her a way out. Could you just like pretend to be me? You want me to turn you into your brother? Nobody in Elyria has even met Sebastian. They wouldn't know the difference. Now, she's headed to Elyria Academy. Let's go kick cow! Where the men have game and the women have attitude. Hey there, pretty lady. Ew, girls with butts like mine do not talk to boys with faces like yours. Uh. What up? <laughs> We're gonna be tight, bro! Seriously, how old are you? I uh, skipped a couple grades. <laughs> There is something odd about that new boy. You are so busted! But at this school, everyone's got a secret. Duke wants Olivia. Do you like cheese? Who wants Sebastian? Isn't he cute? How you doing, babe? Woo! Who is really Viola, whose brother is dating Monique. So she hates Olivia, who's dating Duke, to make Sebastian jealous. What does your heart tell you? Huh? I mean... Which one would you rather see naked? Is really Viola getting jealous because she wants Duke, who thinks she's a guy. Okay, okay. Uh, um. And this is where it gets really complicated. Excuse me, doofus. Oh boy. Sexual tension, male-female dynamics. Ah! All part of the high school experience. Ah! Love is pain. I hate high school. Is it just me or does this soccer game have more nudity than most? This spring. I'm not really good at talking to girls. Why? You're hot. What? <clears throat> oh, you're an appealing guy. Man. Guy, mm, guy man. The secret is out. Amanda Bynes, Alex Breckenridge, Channing Tatum, Robert Hoffman, Vinnie Jones, Laura Ramsey, and David Cross. I got lady troubles. I got a lifetime of knowledge. She's the man. Oh! Oh, no. oh right. Oh! Oh, for the love of God! All right, now I'll check out the Symbolism of Freemasonry, written by Albert Mackey, 1882. All the deities of pagan antiquity, however numerous they may be, can always be reduced to the two different forms of the generative principle, the active or male, and the passive or female. Hence, the gods were always arranged in pairs as Jupiter and Juno, Bacchus and Venus, Osiris and Isis, etc. Asherah and Baal, right? That's the main uh, biblical pairing. But the ancients went further, believing that the procreative and productive powers of nature might be conceived to exist in the same individual. They made the older of their deities hermaphrodite and used the term arenothalus, or man-virgin, to denote the union of the two sexes in the same divine person. Arsinothalus, which means hermaphrodite. Hermes, Aphrodite, hermaphrodite. Addis has been emasculated, that is, has moved from the earthly elements of the world below to the eternal substance above. Where the Nassine says, there is neither male nor female, but a new creation, a new human being. That is a hermaphrodite, the union of the two sexes in the same divine person. All right, now I'm going to look at this footnote. Is there not a seeming reference to this thought of divine hermaphrodism in the well-known passage of Genesis? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created he him. Male and female created he them. And so being created male and female, they were in the image of God. See? Male and female. Androgynous. Okay, that's, what, that's how they read this. That's why Martin Washington was first lady. George Washington, 
I just wonder why they put these aprons on there with the square and compass that looks like a blade. I do suspect if these people are male that they are castrated. All right. There's Gaia. That's G for Gaia. And the, the, that's the point within the circle. This is the radiant circle of the light, the androgynous atom. <laughs> Chelsea Manning, and I approve this message. What is the See Her Award? It's an award designed to recognize the importance of accurately portraying women across the entertainment landscape. It's extremely challenging to strive for fairness and parity across gender, all genders and to face and expose their greatest fears and push through them. We don't need more or better leaders. We need someone willing to fight but in the form of a real woman in every way and inspiring the heroes who are going to save this world. As part of this movement, we created the hashtag See Her Award to honor women who embody the values of empathy, resilience, and courage. I truly believe that the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. And it was clear to me that I wanted to portray a strong and independent woman, a real one. The irony in this you could potentially put a male face on the female. Yeah, I don't, you could, but this this head by scale is pretty small, so that's why I designed a completely new one um, for the male specifically. But their time is up. We don't need them anymore. We can do better. We wanted her to be universal, to be an inspiration to all people all around the world. And our plan was to make sure we didn't give too much attention to the fact that she's a woman. Yeah. So I want all the girls watching here and now to know that a new day is on the horizon. I just can't wait until you start mixing genders with this stuff, right? Where, where you get like a male voice inside of a, a female body or... That's high on my list of yeah. things to try. The gender possibilities are sort of endless oh, in the yeah. world, right? So why not have them also? Well, that's the idea it. eventually. I'm going to merge the two so you can actually mix and match. His three-year-old saw the movie and when the movie ended, the boy said, when I grow up, I want to be a woman. The time is up. That's the, that's the light of the Kabbalah, right? And the Baphomet has uh, separation and union, basically. That's what it means on the arms. And then God will be androgynous once again, and all will be in peace and harmony and balance and equilibrium and gender neutral as Boris Never mind the Johnson told us at the G7. And as Madonna or Mandonna, uh, Madonna, the virgin, the man virgin, right? Mary is the goddess, right? Uh, same thing. The Catholic priests are, they're eunuchs because they don't get married. That's another way to use that term. This thing here is the American eagle and the bird like winged entity that uh, is used as the symbol for basically every country in the world. It's the seraphim, and the rulers are in the order of the seraphim. And the uh, Baphomet is also the same symbol of androgyny. You got the male, the female, you got the male, the female. Boris said the word equal means more gender neutral. That's what he said. More equal, in other words, more gender neutral. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. I'm Celine Dion. Our children, they are not really our children, as we are all just links in a never ending chain that is life. For us, they are everything. But in reality, we are only a fraction of their universe. We 
miss the past. They dream of tomorrow. We may thrust them forward into the future, but the course will always be theirs to choose. I can't believe they call security. I mean, oh, come on, I'm Celine Dion. <laughs> I'm not spending the night in jail. Holy shit. Oh. Guys, relax, easy. I'm Celine Dion. Yeah, girl, and I'm Beyonce. I'm calling my agent. <laughs> College days, you earned uh -oh. money in quite a surprising <laughs> oh. way, which yes. I didn't know. Yeah, it's were, very surprising. You used to open up for I, a drag act. I opened. I used to open up for these incredible drag queens in North Carolina at this club called the Paddock Club, and I used to like. What did you do? Hot glue my sequins on a little shirt, so I had an outfit. <laughs> but what would you do? What was I your would act? dance. I would dance, and they were very. I would, didn't. I believe I. I wasn't hired because I was good. I, I believe I was hired because I was very enthusiastic. Right. And um, they made it rain for me. As if I believe that's where made it make it rain. Had they would just like make. They just they were amazing. Wow. <laughs> Sandra Bullock kept it all together, including the drag queens and George Lopez. Oh, oh look at you, home. Now, why are there drag queens everywhere? Because they're in the show. They make our film what it is. They are the foundation with which we rested the story. We put the story on top of the drag queens and the film work because they're strong. The most difficult thing for me is to actually walk and talk with breasts that aren't mine in six inch stiletto heels. I am not going out there as a woman pretending to be a man pretending to be Tina Turner. I was here before him. It's all right here on my list, in alphabetical order. Tina, then Tina, then Tina. And you're all doing the same song anyway. What's the difference? Smile. You smiling? I am smiling. Yeah, you ready? Gracie, where are you going? I got my breasts. Hold on, I'll be back. There's a close up, ladies and gentlemen. And what does that look like? The Statue of Liberty. I'm sure it's total coincidence, ladies and gentlemen that the statue on the left not only looks identical to the Statue of Liberty, but has the exact same rays coming off what is arraying her head and as the sun rays, representing the seven continents of the world. It is the sun god that presides over the world. This is Addis. Now, Addis is somebody you need to understand who he is because Addis was the priest or the main servant of Kybele or Ishtar or the wife of Baal, the sun god. And he, in their craziness, let's just leave it that wink, wink, 
of what went happen in those uh, times is he castrated himself, then would dress up, cross-dress as a woman, and wear this hat. This is a close-up of the castrated Addis on the left and Lady Liberty on the right. What I want to suggest to you when I got to this part is I thought to myself, oh my goodness, is Lady Liberty really a lady? Or is it Larry Liberty? <laughs> I don't know. But I'm going to let you decide as we do a little bit close up here and you tell me if that looks like a feminine face. Ignore the long hair. Remember, the priest of Ishtar wore long hair, they castrated themselves, wore robes like women, and wore these headdresses. Now, one more better for you. Here is her face before it is assembled. Pass these out while I put it on the board. Get the lights. <laughs> Try one more time, sir. And before you have the ability to look at the hair and be influenced, that's under construction. Aside from needing to thank uh, three very important people um, who do a lot of construction, my makeup artist, Pamela Westmore, Lana Vigi, who does hair, and Joel Voorhees, who does my wardrobe. So you can be the judge, ladies and gentlemen, but this little rabbit trail here, I believe, shows us that not only has Addis, or the priest of Ishtar, and sun god worship showing up all over Egypt, all over Rome, all over Greece, and everywhere else in the, in the eastern Mediterranean, but is on our soils and has infiltrated America today and has literally become the epitome and the torch of freedom. It's bondage. Dr. Jill Biden. Steve Carell could do a great job playing Jill Biden like in a comedy skit or something. It would look exactly like Jill Biden if he just dressed up in drag. Totally, exactly. And Alice Cooper basically does look like Jill Biden already because he's got the same hairstyle, right? <laughs> the hair is about the same length, although it's black. So if you turned uh, Alice Cooper into a blonde, it would be Jill Biden. Now there's probably some theories out there that it is Alice Cooper it's got the rebus. This is the rebus, right? See, these two guys look very similar, right? So there's probably some theories out there that it's all the same person. I'm not going to go there and say that, but uh, I'm just using these as examples of men. And then Jill Biden looks like these two men. Therefore, Jill Biden, you know, that's just one of my supporting arguments that indicate that Jill Biden is also a man because it looks like these two men right here, right? That's really what I'm saying. I don't know why they look so similar. Probably not a coincidence. <laughs> these people tend to be related somehow. Give him some blonde hair and maybe shave his face a bit more then you got Jill Biden. You know, if you assume Alice Cooper is male, which a lot of people assume he's FTM, but there's, you know, I don't really like to assume things, right? So. I'll, uh, I'll stick with the official story that he's a man with a female first name. So he's practicing ritual androgyny and he, you know, the, his whole theatrics and, and all that stuff is uh, kind of borderline drag queen-ish. Um, his son is a transvestite. So let's say Alice Cooper is male and he kind of dresses up like a woman, with the long hair and the clothes and the fashion and all that stuff. And when he does so, he kind of looks like Jill Biden. So, so for me, that kind of uh, indicates that Jill Biden is also a, a male. Trannies to the left of me, trannies to the right. <laughs> you don't think these people all know what's going on? Look at these trannies, man. There it is, right there. The principalities and powers. And brings us up to modern times. Wow, what feminine hands and facial features you have. My beautiful princess. Excuse me, I need to vomit. There they both are, man. Two men. David Furnish. It's a boy-girl thing. That is a man. See, we've been conditioned to believe that the people in the elite are kind of funny looking and also better than us somehow and also somehow glamorous and beautiful, but they're clearly not and they're clearly transgendered. 
as we can see here. What in the world is that? That is amazing. Any questions that there's an, some kind of hybrid race of demonic entities in the ruling elite class? God save the queen. She ain't no human being. And our figurehead just ain't what she seems. I am not a crook. I am not a crook. Is she kissed Stuart and thanked him? Or was it down there, asked Mr. Little, who was always curious to know about places he'd never been to? It's all right. Notice the nimbus, the halo of rays of the sun. This is an ancient pagan sun god. It's everywhere. This is not something they just made up. Helios, look at this. Holding a torch. He's the Colossus of Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Where did he get the idea of the torch? Ladies and gentlemen, he took a trip here. He took a trip to, to Egypt. He studied these things. This is what he saw. An over a hundred foot Colossus of Helios with this headpiece on of the seven rays of the sun. Don't tell me that that didn't influence him. The exact attributes of Helios or the Colossus and the sun god and all of those things show up in the Statue of Liberty. I feel compelled to, to, to thank three unsung heroes in our entertainment business who have spent decades and decades uh, making people better than they deserve to be and without them congeniality couldn't have happened. Um, the, the first being the person who invented the tweezer, the second being the person who invented the support pantyhose, and the fourth being the inventor of the Wonder Bra. I forgot my breasts. Hold on, I'll be back. He wants his propaganda inside every living room in Germany. All of Germany's artists, writers, musicians, painters and sculptors together in one organization. It's the first significant step on a road to absolute control of all media. This will become his empire and make him insanely powerful. Da drüben auf dem Boden liegt meine Sprache. <laughs> Okay, um, in was für großartigen Zeiten wir leben, weil irgendwann war ich mal Kellnerin, dann war ich Putzfrau, dann war ich Diskotänzerin, dann war ich Hundefriseuse. Wer, wer hätte gedacht, dass alle diese Berufe mich eines Tages auf diese Bühne führen würden? Aber Tante Christel, Onkel Heinz, danke. Danke, alle. All right, welcome back. Today I just want to get back to basics a little bit and do a bit of forensic anthropology, get back to the fundamentals. But a subscriber sent me this photo recently, and um, I just realized what a uh, rare photo it really is, because what we have is an actual female on the right. And then, of course, we have the male on the left. So we can see the bone structure very clearly. I think the official story is that these are twins or something, but I don't, I don't think they're even related, to be honest. But who knows? It, that's not the point. Point is, there's a real female. It's very hard to find a real female on the Internet. So here's how I do it, okay? This is just how I do it. This is what really allowed me to know with 100% certainty that these people were trans how I could spot the tranny for sure, because they're so deceptive, it's hard to tell sometimes. If you don't know exactly what to look for and what to pinpoint. So what I do, my eyes kind of start like right here, then you go up, and then notice this thing here. You can call that the Adonis belt. Some people call it the hip dip. Men have this, okay? All right, I have this. Notice it's below the navel on the sides, the hip dip. And then you'll have another love handle. Type thing, right? 
We all know what that is. Now, if you if you have a few extra pounds, it'll be a little bit larger. If you're athletic, it'll look uh, slightly different. And these are, you know, trannies trying to uh, pass as female, so they're doing the best they can, but still, it's there. So men do have hips, right? These are hips and a pelvis, but it's narrow. And also the height, it goes up and it ends there, basically. Those are the end of the hips, and then you have this love handle thing that ends right above the navel right there, okay? So you have this kind of shape, and then you have this shape, and it's narrow. And in addition to that, you have the broad shoulders, which wider than the hips. Now here, the, the butt is swinging out to the left, so let's go over here. Shoulder, straight down. Basically, the hand is right below the shoulder, and look, the shoulders are wider than the hips. Now, it's not standing exactly straight up, but still, you can see, you could take out the measuring tape if you wish. Shoulders much wider than the hips, basically by this much, by the width of the shoulder, all right? The arms on a man will hang straight down to the side because the shoulders are broad and stick out like that, and the hips are narrow, so the arms will hang out right down there. Now, my main point is you don't need to look at reproductive organs. It's always concealed, right? So... You look at the bone structure. Now, on the other hand, how do I know this is a real female and not a tranny? Well, okay, let's start here. First of all, <laughs> we've got, we got some pretty wide hips going on here, right? Follow the arrow up. Where's the hip dip? There isn't one. And look at the hips end there. Now, sometimes the hips will end almost at the same level as the navel. This one's quite a bit higher, actually. The thinnest part of the torso is right up here. But look at this, there's no hip dip. There's not, they don't have this. She doesn't have this thing here. It's just one continuous curve. And this is not. This is dip, love handle, one curve, right? One large curve above the navel. Some people say, well, the navel's higher. Well, higher than what? So this is lower, right? The hips are lower, right? The navel's higher than the hips. The hips are lower. Here, the hips end above the navel. Yeah. So this is basic stuff. Just so you know what, where I'm coming from, the way I think about it. Maybe you think about it differently. That's fine. This is photographic evidence. And shoulders, okay? Shoulders, straight down, just as wide as these hips, right? The same width. Now, it may not be to the exact millimeter, but basically, shoulders just as wide as the hips. So if you only look up here, you see, well, are those wide shoulders or not? You have to say wide relative to what, okay? Wide relative to... To the hips and it's the same width as the hips so the the arms are kind of at an angle right the arms cannot hang straight down because they're, they're going to run into the hips so the arms have to come out like that at an angle so just look at a male this is a male all right male body this is female and look at the small little face right larger skull larger bones higher cheekbones jagged and uh, angular Whereas this one is just kind of a small, thin little face, kind of simple, right? A soft, simple little face. Simply put, this one it has a more masculine face, a bit of makeup and feminization going on, but this one here, very soft and feminine. Now, when they wear clothes, they try to, they can wear hip pads that will make it look like they have these uh, hips. And they try to take photos at an angle, and they usually curve their butt out and stuff like that. So they're they're always trying to give the illusion that they have a body like this when in fact it's actually like that. So that's just some basic, uh, I just wanted to go through this photo once so I know people sometimes share my videos with their friends and I haven't been doing a lot of uh, forensic analysis lately because I did it so much for two years and I figured well people know the basics already but there's always newcomers coming into this thing so once in a while I gotta get back to basics. So let's review Male, basically like a rectangular shaped, think of a two by four piece of plywood, right? Female, curvy, rounded hips, no hip dip, narrow part is above the navel. The man has the hip dip down here below the navel, all right? Narrow pelvis, man does not give birth. Females were designed to give birth. They have a wide pelvis that's basically as wide as their shoulders, because their shoulders are not that wide, whereas a man has the broad, bony shoulders. And there's many differences in the skull. Cruising to a bar on the shore A picture grace the ground on the door She alone knows the love and birth by it
coming. Meghan Markle says she and her husband, Prince Harry, plan to raise their baby in a, quote, gender fluid way. It's a decision that more and more parents are making these days. There's this real movement towards individuality and almost like a genderless attitude in London. This new look and this new feel of genderless is really coming from a much more inner confidence from people. It's about styles that could work with anybody and have really played with the products in a non-traditional way. I think the boundaries between sexuality have really been blurred now and people are really embracing their own sexuality in a visual way. The Baphomet. What is the Baphomet? A goat figure. Part man, part beast. Male, female, hermaphrodite. Sitting on a great throne. The Baphomet is the representation of Lucifer. The prince of the air, the one who has dominion over the earth. This is the Baphomet. The Baphomet is a god, a devil, a saint, a sinner. The Baphomet is anything you can think of that can be twisted and turned for some malevolent purpose. The Baphomet permeates every aspect of society. And the Baphomet goes back, back, back in time. The Baphomet is not new. The Baphomet defies God's order. The book of Genesis, it begins. In the beginning God created. It is the very order that God sets forth that the Baphomet starts out to defy. If we as Christians do not understand creation, if we embrace evolution, theistic evolution, or any perversion of God's creation account, we glorify the Baphomet. The Baphomet's purpose from the beginning was to turn God's order upside down, to change everything into opposites. This is what Lucifer did in the garden. Death came because of Lucifer and because man fell. The order of things became unnatural. Death is not natural. It has become normal. But in God's perfect order, there was no death. Death is a perversion of life. That is the beginning of the Baphomet. And at that point in time, when Lucifer convinced man to disobey God, he took dominion. He became the prince of the air, and the governor, and ruler of the land, and the keeper of men's souls. That is the Baphomet. And but for Jesus Christ, the Baphomet would rule in every heart, every mind, and every aspect of God's creation. But it is not so because of Jesus Christ. Yet the Baphomet is everywhere. The ancient gods of the Sumerians, the Incans, the Egyptians, the Hittites, their gods were all aspects of the Baphomet. The Roman pantheon, the Greek pantheon. Every god represented an aspect of the Baphomet. The Baphomet is diversity of every extreme kind. Every perversion, every sick trait of man is contained and represented in the Baphomet. The Baphomet denies the division between man and woman, God's original order for man. It denies the hierarchy of the man created first than the one. It denies everything that is orderly and good in creation and changes it. These are things we see in our world today. When you turn on your television, you open a window into the kingdom of the Baphomet. Almost everything is a promotion of Baphomet philosophy. It doesn't matter whether it's a comedy show, a news show, a religious program, a Christian program. Most of it glorifies the Baphomet. But worst of all are the churches of America. These are denizens of Baphomet representations. 
many will find this a shocking statement. Yet, the churches practice Baphomet rituals. The Christ Mass is a Baphomet ritual. Look up Mass. Find the definition in the Roman Catholic Catechism. It is the re-sacrifice of Christ over and over and over. That is Baphomet religion. 99% of Christian churches today practice Christ Mass. They sacrifice Christ over and over. They set up Christmas trees. Read about it in the book of Jeremiah. It's clearly described there. These are Baphomet rituals. The Baphomet is in your church. The commercialism that goes along with this Christ Mass. It's all part of the Baphomet to pervert everything about Jesus Christ to assign an arbitrary birthday for Jesus, to turn it into a commercial money-grubbing event, to set up pageants in churches, to glorify all that is false, all that glitters, that is Baphomet religion. Even the dregs of the dregs, sitting in a bar, stone drunk on Christmas, if asked, is this the birthday of Christ? Even the worst reprobate of reprobates will tell you, no, Christ wasn't born December 25th. And Easter is even worse. What day does Easter occur on? Any time within 30 days. Surely if it was a celebration of the resurrection of Christ, it would happen on the same day. But it doesn't. Because it is tied to the equinox. It is a pagan ordinance. It gets its day from the celestial bodies. The Bible speaks against this. That is an aspect of the Baphomet. And it has nothing to do with the Jewish Passover. Do you know what day the Jewish Passover occurs on? Most people don't know. I can tell you something for sure. It occurs on the same day of the month every year. It never changes. Why? Because that is God's order. It happened on a particular day. Therefore, it is celebrated on that day. Baphomet religion does not respect order. Easter can happen on any day within a 30-day period. It is not the resurrection of Christ. He rose from the dead on a particular day. If you know what day that is, by all means, respect it. But you don't. You get your Easter from the pagans and from a reading of the celestial bodies. This is Baphomet in your church. When your church demands 10% of your gross income and gives you a tax receipt from Caesar, that is an aspect of the Baphomet. It is a symbol that the Baphomet rules over the entire land, that the Baphomet rules over your church, that the Baphomet rules over your finances, over every aspect of life on earth. The Baphomet claims dominion over all of creation and for a time rightfully has it everywhere you turn every thought you have that does not acknowledge God's perfect order that does not acknowledge the creation that God explains in the Bible the order of things in fact this one here looks a lot like uh, Giselle's sister and the women because of the pelvis the women's uh, pelvic bones their legs come out like this Men also have the longer bones and the arms. And all they're doing is shaving off the hair on the man's legs. And you get someone that looks like Giselle. In fact, this guy's body looks a lot like Giselle. If this guy shaved his hair off, put on a wig and some makeup, he might become a Victoria's Secret model. <laughs> but I don't recommend it. Or a Hollywood actress, so-called actress, actor. Again, there's the male hip dip below the navel. Cameron Diaz wears the breasts. See that? It's all very masculine, actually, if you look at it closely. Um, of course, an angel, right? Full throttle. The stick shift. An angel. They believe they're androgynous angels, and all of these people are so called androgynous angels. There's a. Uh, Jessica Alba, same thing. Hip dip. Look at how high the navel is compared to the uh, everything else. 
there's possibly some obstructions down there. I'm not sure. But uh, they, I think this is a Filipino transvestite. Shoulders. See, it's all smoothed out, feminized, hairless. They just wax all their hair off. That's all they're doing. And you got a Filipino who's going to look a little bit effeminate anyway. No offense to the Filipino men out there. And there's the, uh, if you just see him walking around, you know, you got the uh, lots of Botox injections in the face, but you got those broad shoulders again, um, something here covering up the hips, but overall very masculine stance, the shoulders, right? As a man, if you're a man out there, you know that you kind of feel the presence of your shoulders all the time. That's kind of where our strength comes from our center of balance, if you will, whereas the women, it's more about the hips. Long, lanky arms just kind of hang out down there like that. Okay, that's a transvestite. And let's go back to the textbook again. So chapter 4 is the assignment of sex. talks about the differences in bone structure between men and women in the pelvis, the skull, the legs, the arms, and other bones as well. Chapter 4, Assignment of Sex, Criteria for Sex Attribution in the Adult Skeleton, Pelvic Traits. The distinctive human pelvis shape as an adaption to posture and locomotion is shared by both sexes. The added selective pressure of carrying and giving birth to large-brained babies is borne only by the female. Thus, it is no surprise that the pelvic area exhibits the greatest sexual dimorphism and can be regarded as the gold standard for sexual discrimination. All right, let me highlight that again. The pelvic area exhibits the greatest sexual dimorphism and is regarded as the gold standard for sexual discrimination or determination. So experts and professionals can find human skeletons and they can determine the sex of those skeletons based only on the bone so what we're doing with, uh, basically we're examining live specimens to look beyond the uh, surface illusion. It's an illusion. These people are female illusionists. Thrilling Gen Z terror pop. And just by the, uh, the way this was presented in the media, I could tell this is kind of the next up-and-coming star that they want to put in front of the uh, masses, especially the young people. Here we are. We're back, baby. <laughs> We're glad you're with us. We know that your concerns are a mile high. And we hope this bit of entertainment can feed and fuel your soul. And maybe bring you some strength and a touch of joy to prepare for the days to come. Bruises on both my knees to you. Don't say thank you. Or please, I do what I want when I'm wanting to. My soul, so cynical, so you're a tough guy. Billie Eilish, 2019 is hers. All right, so that's how it works. They kind of find their tranny. Who are they going to put in front of the young people? It's the new androgyne in the spotlight, and they're going to plaster this person everywhere you can possibly imagine. So if you're like me, you've probably never heard of this person. The young people probably have already. But you're going to hear this person, all right? Then I looked on YouTube and I noticed it was the number one trending video, right? Someone I'd never even heard of. And the song is called Bad Guy, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and the lyrics are, I'm a bad guy, duh. And this person, by the way, they're saying this is female. I actually thought they were going to say this is a guy. Like an 80s hairband rock star. It looks like an androgynous man. See the Adam's apple there. So I'm going to go through this, uh, these photos very quickly because it's just so obvious. I mean, just look at the size of that head, right? Not even too many attempts to, uh, even the hat right there it had a little man symbol on top. Eyebrows. It's a man face, all right? Maybe they may have puffed out the lips a bit, but it's kind of got that androgynous uh, model look. And basically, it seems like they're turning young people against the adults. That it, it's like the cultural revolution. Right, And in fact, I'm going to talk about that a bit more in this video about the overall propaganda. There's the album cover, right? They're just telling you right there it's a demonically possessed transgendered entity 
all right? That is their belief. That is their ritual. That is what they're doing, all right? The big neck there, the big jaw, the brow bone, the cheekbones, all right? It's just a dude. It's just a transvestite, all right? The shoulders. So this is the latest tranny, up-and-coming tranny, covering up the Adam's apple there, giving the old shout-out to Lucifer. So this kind of reminds me of my childhood. I grew up listening to Motley Crue, Twisted Sister, and, of course, all the 70s bands as well. But in, for me, I grew up in the 80s, and it was like this. They put the androgynous rock stars in front of us. And we didn't really... I mean, at the time, we thought, well, this is kind of weird. They look like a bunch of trannies. What's the deal with that? But somehow they were able to sell it to us as being cool, right? And Motley Crue, right? The, the old devil horn sign right there. The album covers the upside-down pentagram, right? And people back then were like, oh, these guys are satanic. And I didn't believe... I was like, no, they, come on. They're just trying to sell albums, right? They're just trying to shock people. So young people are not going to listen to anything I'm saying. You know, the pentagrams on the mask, right? Right there, the serpent and the wings. That's just an ancient... Uh, mystery religion symbol and you see it everywhere in society masons control society and there's twisted sister but yeah they're men but they're a bunch of transvestites right i don't know if they dress like that off stage but on stage they're promoting the transvestite image right look at this one here under the blade what do you think they're talking about here what is that blade cutting off <laughs> i mean it's all right there all right now this is a news article I found this week. Transgendered boy in Georgia is being forced to run for prom queen instead of prom king, and this is unacceptable. All right, now you may be confused. What are they talking about? The word transgender boy, that means girl, actually. FTM, female to male. A senior at Johnson High School was called into a private meeting with the principal and the school supervisor. Oh, the evil adults, right? The evil adults who won't let the children turn into trannies. They told me I couldn't run for prom king because I wasn't a man. The only way I was eligible to run for prom was to be put on the prom queen ballot. And this is a woman saying it, right? This is a female who thinks she's a man, all right? A mentally ill person who's been brainwashed by the Kabbalistic media industry. Oh, he needs a released in support of Pride Month and is requesting for people to go to change.org to sign a petition for the Equality Act, which gives the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community protection from being discriminated. Her video is getting mass attention as Swift makes blatant blows against social media, Kanye and Kim West, and the Christian community. Multiple LGBTQ celebrities appear in the video in a rich and luxurious trailer park. And across the way, the video shows people holding signs saying homosexuality is a sin. But it's not the signs that are bothering people. It's the way Swift portrays this group. The characters are missing teeth, look shaggy, poor, and angry. All right, today I'm going to talk about the Taylor Swift video propaganda and the symbolism and the individual. So the very first thing we see is a quote from Cher, which says, Mom, I am a rich man. My mom said to me, you know, sweetheart, one day you should settle down and marry a rich man. And I said, Mom, I am a rich man. And it also has all kinds of trannies. This is tranny propaganda, androgynous alchemy propaganda, Masonic Kabbalistic propaganda. The trannies are taking over the world. You need to calm down. There's the tattoo with butterflies and a serpent. And the muscular back. Taylor hanging out with some drag queens. Basically, this whole video is just a big trans fest. But if you think about it, all videos really are, right? This one's just a bit more open than usual. So they're coming out. It's a very transpocalyptic video. There's Laverne Cox. All right, and there's some, now I forget this one's name, this guy's name, but he dress he puts on dresses at all these award shows and stuff, and it's just some dude dressing up like a woman. You know what I mean? It's a drag queen, and there they are drinking the magic secret sauce, the alchemical mixture, a bunch of rainbow flags, and there's the trailer park trash Christians, right? Christians, of course, all live in trailer parks, and now here on stage. These are all trannies from the uh, Dr RuPaul's Drag Race, right? So open, openly admitted trannies are on stage pretending to be celebrities, specific celebrities like Lady Gaga, 
Ariana Grande. You, you love it how I move you. You love it how I touch you, my one. When all is said and done, you believe God is a woman. And I, I feel it after midnight. Feeling that you can't find my one. And it is when we're done, you believe God is a woman. And I will strike down upon me with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my sisters. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon you. Yeah, I didn't know that. <clears throat> How is it a lucky number? 13 is the age when... Um, that's why boys get bar mitzvah at the age of 13, by the way. It's the age when the soul gets completely, like, sort of sol solidified in your body. When you come into your own. This is one of those Kabbalah things? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It is. So you've been doing some spiritual searching. Yeah. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Did you have a party, for, like a Kabbalah party in New York? I saw that there was, like, an invitation of some sort in you. In New York? No. Yeah. I had a, um, I had a cocktail party. Mm. A Kabbalah cocktail party? Kabbalah. Kabbalah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, Kabbalah if you're Israeli, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, now, how did you become involved in this? Um, a girlfriend of mine go, used to was going all the time and um, to these classes. They're classes. It's a, the Kabbalah mm -hmm. Learning Center. Talk about brotherly love. Ariana Grande is opening up about her decision to leave the Catholic Church, and it has a lot to do with her brother, Frankie. As we're sure you know, AG's half-brother, Frankie, is openly gay, and when he came out, it made Ariana question her faith. In an interview with The Independent, Ariana opened up about the whole situation and was very candid, telling the outlet, when my brother was told that God didn't love him, I was like, okay, that's not cool. However, Ariana is a spiritual person, so they decided to try their hand with another religion, Kabbalah, and discussed how they came to that decision. They were building a Kabbalah center in Florida, so we both checked it out and really had a connection with it. The Kabbalah is a collection of Jewish magical texts which were given to mankind via psychic communion with a fallen angel called Raziel. Raziel is one of a pantheon of so-called fallen angels who serve the light bringer Lucifer. The Kabbalah describes the many angels and demons who inhabit the spiritual realm. The Kabbalah gives Kabbalists a road map called the Tree of Life which explains how to invoke and communicate with these powerful spirits. The magical information in the Kabbalah originates from Babylon and ancient Egypt at the time of the pharaohs, but did not reach Europe in printed form until the 11th and 12th centuries. The sacred books of the Kabbalah are just a few thousand words long, but they contain complex descriptions of a spherical Earth, parallel universes, and the atomic nature of matter, ideas which have become common doctrine amongst modern physicists and astronomers. How could such complex information be contained in a group of ancient texts barely larger than an average magazine? The answer is that the Kabbalah is written in code. Codes are used to conceal multi-layered complex information which would later be studied by medieval alchemists. Sir Isaac Newton and many leading scientists studied the rich occult sciences within the Kabbalah. There was a time when mysticism, religion, alchemy, astronomy and astrology were studied as one Kabbalistically based tradition. Jewish physicist Albert Einstein conveyed pages and pages of complex calculations in a simple five symbol code. 
E equals mc squared. Modern day quantum physics, chaos theory, and the notion of parallel universes can all be traced back to the original text of the ancient Kabbalah. The higher secrets of the Kabbalah included instructions on how to kill a person with just one look. This is called the evil eye. The Since medieval times, the Jewish people have been considered a race of magicians. The biblical rabbis used shaman type techniques to induce altered states of consciousness. Fasting, flagellation, and burying oneself up to the neck were all techniques used to prepare the rabbi magician for a battle through the seven portals of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, where they would eventually meet the supreme deity in a realm called the Merkaba. Ritual sex magic was also practiced amongst some Jewish cults. Many temples had holes in the walls so that rabbis could ritually sodomize a prostitute, a young man or a boy, and invoke the fallen angel Raziel as they reached sexual climax. The word sodomy is derived from the name of the biblical city of Sodom in which sex magic and also blood sacrifice were widely practiced. A strange version of vampirism or blood drinking is still practiced to this day by many rabbis who suck the blood from the freshly severed foreskin of newborn babies. The collection of texts called the Kabbalah were eventually transcribed by Rabbi Isaac the Blind in Provence in the south of France during the 12th century. For the first time in its 6,000 year history, the ancient magical techniques of invoking fallen demonic angels and killing someone using the evil eye were put down on paper. The Kabbalistic writings of Isaac the Blind fell into the hands of a group of nine French noblemen. These noblemen became known as the Knights Templar. Many of us are familiar with the Knights Templar, or simply the Templars a Catholic military order formed in the mid-12th century, who rose to surprising heights of power in such a short space of time. The knights themselves were often thought to be some of the most skilled warriors in the Crusades, and donning foreboding armour, those that were not without their distinct white mantles bearing the Red Cross, they were certainly a force to be reckoned with, and not one you'd want to be on the bad side of. But most of the Templars weren't actually fighters, but were instead more like financiers, and those more interested in the economic infrastructure throughout not just their own Christian kingdom, but the rest of the world too. In fact, it can be argued that given the global reach of the Templars during their century-long operation, they were the first multinational corporation. But when the Holy Land was lost, and support for the Order waned, Rumours about the Templars began to circulate, those very rumours which came to cast a most ominous and spine-chilling shadow around this most suspicious group. In fact, these rumours became so palpable that King Philip IV of France, who happened to also be in debt to the Order, took advantage of the Templars' decline, and seeking to erase his debts, had many of the Templars arrested, tortured, and executed. After harassing Pope Clement V for long enough, the Pope disbanded the Templar Order, but those rumours that had permeated the air would live long throughout the ages, and spur on speculation that the Templars were far more sinister than one might have realised, perhaps even owing to the supernatural. 
Amongst those rumours was the idea that the Knights Templar worshipped not the Christian god to whom their operations seemed to revolve around, but instead a more fiendish and hellish deity known as Baphomet. The entire Bible explains God's order for things, and it explains his salvation from the Baphomet. That is the simplicity of the Bible, of the Gospel. In a complex world governed by Baphomet values, we have only one sure course, and that is to follow Jesus Christ and let him lead the way through this mess, because this world is governed by the Baphomet. When you send your children to school, you're dumping them into the Baphomet's educational layer. They're going to learn about transgenderism. The system is going to normalize homosexuality. They're going to watch this stuff on TV. And half the time, what they're watching isn't what it appears to be. And today in society, the ultimate expression of the Baphomet is to reverse the gender roles, to confuse the gender roles, to confuse the children, to confuse the adults, to create normalcy out of the abnormal, to defy God's order, to twist what is male, to twist what is female, to create impressions in the mind of gullible people about what it means to be male, what it means to be female. I recently looked at a line of clothing brought out by the great Canadian singer Celine Dion. Her line of clothing is a glorification of the Baphomet. These are clothing items for small children, clothing items that contain images of skulls, demonic characters, wicked, transgender, homosexual endorsing statements. Fans of Aleister Crowley might also be interested to know that the occultist recognized Baphomet as the hieroglyph of arcane perfection, and that this deity was a reflection of ourselves. Baphomet would become an important figure within Crowley's cult of Thelema in the early 20th century, and he would also be recognized by Crowley's writing as an androgynous being that stood for life and love. Hello, beast. Who's this? This is my dear friend Martha, Mrs. Alistair Crowley. How do you do? Eat, drink, be happy. What dancing, Martha? Not my thing. What is your thing? Oh, everyone has a thing. My thing is love. That's not very satanic. On the contrary, Satan is love. In your heart, you worship Satan just as I do. Every beautiful woman does. As anyone who studied Crowley for more than a minute, you'll know that sex magic played an integral role in his beliefs, and according to Crowley, Baphomet was also symbolic of the magical child that was produced through such sex magic. With this in mind, it was believed by Crowley that Baphomet represented the convergence of opposites, especially in this instance, where the magically infused child would be conceived through the physical act of sex. Both magic, in the ritualistic copulation, and the biological fusing of sperm and egg, would in a sense become a representation of Baphomet, he who resembled opposites. All right, Crowley, let's not waste our breath on formalities. You? At once, sir. Such a lovely boy. What do you want, Crowley? I want your soul, of course. That is, my master wants it. You're yours. Give me my sister. You're a businessman, Mr. Wayne. You know that saying something doesn't make it so. I'll need a contract. Inked in your blood. Oh, please spare me this, Bilge. I don't believe in Satan. Oh, you're modern. Rational. Well-educated. 
a civilized man of peace and moderation. Of course you don't believe in Satan, but that doesn't matter. Satan believes in you. Cutie. It's you he wants. Your spiritual essence, not your company. Alistair is just a very wise and loving man. A teacher. In exchange for my sister's liberty, I have to sell... <coughs> I have to sell my soul to the devil. Precisely. You get my master's eternal friendship. You're a smart businessman, Mr. Wayne. Think of that. Think of the power you have. I have power now, you fool. I could buy and sell the likes of you. See now, there's the beast inside of you. There's no beast in you. <laughs> I'll be honest, Thomas. Tell me you didn't meet the devil. The word cabal, meaning a group who conspire together, comes from the word cabala. One such cabal who were to later inspire a whole armada of black magic cults and Freemasonry were the so-called Knights Templar. They laughingly called themselves the Poor Knights of Christ, but these men were far from poor. They deliberately styled themselves as monks so that they could go about their Luciferian Kabbalistic studies and conduct business without being taxed nor arouse suspicion from the Vatican. The Kabbalistic higher secrets of ritual sodomy, the evil eye, chanting incantations, necromancy, blood sacrifice and invoking the fallen angels in service to Lucifer fascinated the French Knights Templar. They realized that the Kabbalah originated in Palestine and once they had realized that the Kabbalah was the key to untold spiritual magical power they cunningly planned a bloody crusade to Palestine in order to search for more Kabbalistic and magical artifacts. They eventually discovered and looted the Temple of Solomon. Solomon was a biblical magician king who is accredited with inspiring large parts of the corpus of works we now know as the Kabbalah. the Knights Templar arrived in Palestine with one main goal, to stop the Muslims from gaining any knowledge about the Kabbalah. Historical Islamic oral accounts from the 12th century testify to a sickening crusade of plunder, torture, murder and sexual depravity. The Knights Templar once they had discovered the magical teachings of the Kabbalah, were dedicated utterly to destroying its origins so that they might hold its secrets exclusively. Ariana Grande has got a real problem with demons, she told Complex magazine. Apparently, she went to a haunted cemetery called Stull Cemetery near Kansas City. And it's actually supposedly one of the gateways to hell, supposed gateways <laughs> to hell. And this is what she said happens. I felt this sick, overwhelming feeling of negativity over the whole car and we smelled sulfur, which is the sign of a demon. Who knew? <laughs> she said, this is scary, let's leave. I rolled down the window before we left and said, we apologize. We didn't mean to disrupt your peace. Then I took a picture and there are three super distinct faces in the picture. They're faces of textbook demons. That is so creepy. It is super creepy. And especially because she also says that she took the picture and she tried to send it to her manager, but it wouldn't download because it said it was too many megabytes. In fact, it was 666 megabytes, which is supposedly the mark the, of the beast. That's right. And now Ariana is obviously very passionate about this demon encounter. She actually had a whole folder on her phone entitled Demons. But when the interviewer asked to see it, she said she had actually deleted it because so many crazy occurrences were happening. She also said that she felt like the demons followed her back home. And <laughs> she had an encounter where she was sleeping, where she saw this black figure over her bed. She didn't want to feed the fear. She thought it was there 
it wanted to scare her. So she just called her friend and she fell asleep on the phone. When she woke up, the room was demon free. <laughs> So it's obvious to see where all this talk about God being a woman comes from. It comes from the satanic beliefs of the Kabbalah. The divine feminine is taught in the Kabbalah as Shekinah, who they worship. Shekinah is also one and the same with the Gnostic goddess Sophia. As stated in Helen Blavatsky's book, Isis Unveiled, she states, For the elder Sophia is Shekinah, the face of God, God's Shekinah, which is his image. As we look at the image of the flame here, we'll read on. I am Shekinah, the one flame, the holy mother of creation, the fire that begets the other flames. I am the sister, the grandmother, the mother, the daughter, and the child. I am Mother Mary. I am Kuan Yin. I am the white buffalo calf woman. And I am Gaia, your earth mother. I am Shekinah, your divine mother goddess. She goes on to say, Sophia sends the heavenly Eve, who has the true knowledge of God, and enters the snake called the teacher, and teaches Adam and Eve the true way of salvation. The snake is the true prophet and revealer of the truth. To say that God is a woman is blasphemous, and it is not biblical at all. The Bible tells us that wisdom is one of the seven spirits of God. In Isaiah 11 3, the seven spirits are the spirit of the Lord and the spirits of wisdom, of understanding, of counsel, of might, of knowledge, and of fear of the Lord. Here are represented the seven spirits, which are before the throne of God. And although wisdom has a feminine gender pronoun, as in the book of Proverbs, it is no different than calling a table a woman in the French language. Wisdom is not an entity within itself, and it is not God within itself. It is one of the seven spirits that God has. And all these other celebrities, and Taylor Swift is there as well. So they're basically saying that, yes, these celebrities actually are trannies. That's what they're telling you right there. The very end of the video, pushing for the Equality Act. All right. Now, I've shown many times the Equality Act will legislate turning children into androgynes. All right. It will sterilize and essentially destroy the human race. Okay. And that's what they're trying to do right now. Taylor Swift pushes for Equality Act in new pro-LGBT music video. And look at the symbolism right there. Now, Taylor Swift has openly admitted to using symbolism, which he calls Easter eggs. And right here, at the beginning of the video, it's the point within the circle. Let's see what that means. All right, so this is the book called The Symbolism of Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey, written in 1882. The point within a circle is another symbol of great importance in Freemasonry. All the deities of pagan antiquity, however numerous they may be, can always be reduced to two different forms of the generative principle, the active or male and the passive or female. Hence the gods were always arranged in pairs as Jupiter, Juno, Bacchus, Venus, Osiris, Isis. But the ancients went further, believing the procreative and productive powers of nature might be conceived to exist in the same individual. They made the older of their deities hermaphrodite and used the term whatever or man virgin to denote the union of the two sexes in the same divine person. And this union was symbolized by different ways, but principally by the point within the circle, the tranny in the swimming pool. Well, there's the Adam's apple on the Ellen show. Any questions? Any burning questions? Kind of like 9-11, right? It looked like a plane flew through a uh, glass building. Well, that building was not made of glass. It was made of steel. Underneath the glass was steel that you couldn't really see. Underneath the tranny is male bone structure. That's covered up in paint, all right? They call it makeup. So the cover of Time magazine is part of the propaganda, getting this person out there. Best man. Who's the best man? Taylor's the best man. His naked body explained. Whose body? Taylor's body. How to get Taylor Swift's body? Well, first of all, be born as a man. That'll do it. But if you don't want people to know you're a man, put on a dress, cross your legs, 
put your hand on your hips and wear a bunch of makeup, all right? For those of you who don't know that there's a difference between the bone structure of men and women, we can show this in photographs. It's called photographic evidence, which is admissible into the court of law. This is called photographic evidence, and I'm doing something called forensic analysis. This person right here, male bone structure. Look at the shoulders, look at the torso, look at the skull, all right? I mean, I mean I'm, it's just so tedious for me to sit here and explain this stuff when it's so obvious, all right? That's male bone structure. Just look at the pictures, all right? Which one does it look like? Which one does it resemble? Oh, but it can't be a man because it's wearing a dress. Well, my photographs prove this person has male bone structure, all right? No hips, all right? Look at that. Just normal male hips. You can get kind of a slight curve on a male body like this. I mean, come on, look at the hips, all right? Hips are the gold standard of forensic anthropology, all right? Forensic analysis. There's no hips there, all right? Look at the hip to shoulder ratio. Look at the skull. Look at the torso. Look at the placement of the navel compared to the hips, all right? The whole thing, all right? This means turning female women into men and men into women. It is important to know that most, if not all, Hollywood celebrities including actors, actresses, sportsmen and women, singers, newscasters and any other individuals who you see regularly on television, the stage and the silver screen are transgendered. Before I continue, it is important to say that personally it is not up to me or anyone else to judge the choices that people make in life including choosing to change one's sex. It is the most high alone who will judge individuals on their choices made and actions done in life. What I have a problem with is the deception element. Hollywood and bloodline families, the Illuminati, have made and cultivated this deception over many many years. Why keep it a secret then you may ask? I will cover this later on. Now, bloodline families are rife all over the world, but most of you will have heard mainly about the British monarchy, the Rothschilds, the Astors and the Rockefellers. Other well-known bloodline families include the Bush family and the Kissingers. If you research you will find that most of the well-known and A-list celebrities belong to bloodline families. These families run everything in the world and they refer to themselves as the illuminated ones. They are members of secret societies such as the Freemasons, Skull, and Bones, Brotherhood of the Snake or Dragon and the Knights Templar. These are just a few, there are many more and they are all connected to each other and they all strive towards the same goal of implementing the New World Order, also called the One World Order. The biggest darkest secret to these familities is that they all worship Lucifer. They are intent on bringing the souls of humans to hell with them by creating chaos on earth and turning everything that the Most High has created on its head by tampering with his creation through lies, deception and cultivating a greedy and sinful world by many methods. All right, that's a dude in drag, all right? That's a dude with makeup. Well, it's an instinct as well, right? We, I have an instinct towards real females. And it kind of goes haywire when you look at a tranny. It's like, whoa, it kind of looks like a female, but something ain't right. A lot of people just don't know what a tranny looks like, all right? It looks like this. This is Taylor the tranny, all right? Taylor Mason the tranny. Why the hips? Because women give birth. They need different kinds of hips, all right? And look at the shoulders there sticking out like that, all right? It's just a bony, lanky dude in a dress with lipstick on. The makeup is to conceal and to deceive, all right? And it, it's a very powerful optical illusion. These people are female illusionists, very masculine, right? Look at that male skull, but it's airbrushed with makeup. And they give these people something called FFS, facial feminization surgery. The forehead, down to the nose, even down to the chin, that's all feminized, smoothed out, reduced. Now, it seems like they forgot to do it there. Well, even, even uh, Katy Perry may have done a bit of things on the nose there, but still has that massive brow bone. It's called deception. There's two layers. There's the first layer of makeup, and underneath that is a male skull. And if you can't see that, I can't help you. Just continue being deceived. You can even see the Adam's apple there on this uh, thing right here. His body is a wonderland. Look at that male jaw. It's a boy who's been feminized. 
may have been a handsome boy, right? A handsome young man will turn into someone who looks kind of like an attractive female if you feminize the skull. Everything that the Most High created, they want to change and infect for the very worst. The transgender agenda is one small part. Bloodline families are made up of transgendered individuals. It is plainly obvious to those of us that woke up and once you have seen one, you see them all very clearly. Take the Bush family as an example. Barbara Bush, her daughter and her grandchildren are all transgendered. It is not clear how the women, mothers get their instant families but you can be sure that the mothers did not birth any children because they are men whose gender was changed at birth to the opposite sex. There are many opinions as to where and how they get the children in the first place but one things is certain, the children have the same DNA as the father to keep the bloodline intact. Going back to the subject to Hollywood, how does it make you feel to know that you are being lied to? That your favorite artist, singer, pinup is not the sex you though it was? How does it feel to know your little girls have posters on their bedroom walls of Justin Bieber, when in actuality it is should be Justina? I will just say here that idolatry is a sin. And this whole transgender agenda is one huge reason why it's wrong and sinful to lust over another person, never mind lust over a transgendered individual who is keeping it secret. They want men to lust over men and women to lust over women. They want little girls to have crushes on women and young boys to have crushes on men. It's as simple as that, the elite, as I said before want everything abnormal to be accepted as normal. It is legal in some countries now for people to have relationships with their dogs and they are pushing for it to be legal for adults to have sex with children. Yes, you heard me correctly. All right, that's what's going on. More occult symbolism. All right, but look at that overall. It's very large bone structure in the face. But it's very, the makeup is very precise and very well done and there's tons of makeup wearing a mask now there's uh chelsea manning kind of looks kind of similar right but chelsea manning is not pretending to be female chelsea manning has admitted to being a man in drag right but look at the adam's apple it's basically the same very very similar why is that because they're both a couple of trannies all right taylor swift rules the world the best man the age of consent between homosexual males has been lowered and lowered over the years. Things which people would never have imagined before are now being shown as being the norm. You think Sodom and Gomorrah was bad? As it stands, the world is a million times worse than that already. Stop accepting the fodder and lies. Stop accepting the distorted and changed history of the world. Stop accepting the false theory of evolution. Stop accepting the images you see on the television as truth. She's a what? A transgender. We all know. Oh my gosh. It's okay. It's a man, baby. Can't you see? It's a man, baby. You are so beautiful to me. It's Bieber, 6G Fever. What's a 6G? What the f**k's a Bieber? I don't know. Kind of looks like a girl.
Baphomet. And this is part of the Baphomet agenda. They call this the New World Order, some kind of enlightenment. But I can assure you, it is no New World Order. It is the oldest of the old orders. The Baphomet Order emerged at the Garden of Eden. It is that old. It shows up in every culture. Nimrod was an aspect of the Baphomet. The Baals were aspects of the Baphomet. Ashtaroth, Ishtar, Dobin, all the gods of the old world are alive and well today. It is the new world order which is nothing new but a renewal of the old ways. When you go into a clothing store and you see these garments depicting death, the death cult, this is the Baphomet. The Baphomet introduced death. Death came because the Baphomet convinced man to fall, to disobey God. The death cult is everything to the Baphomet. The Baphomet convinced Adam and Eve that the gender order was evil. The Baphomet convinced man that an enlightened being was not restricted by biology. The Baphomet is in the business today of convincing the world that evidence has no bearing on reality. That your children at the age of four years old may ignore the obvious evidence of biology and decide their own gender at the age of four. I remind you that the average four-year-old has trouble deciding whether or not to poop their pants. How is it that they are capable of making a gender discrimination in their own life? They're not. This is Baphomet ideology. The Baphomet says reality is what you decide. Nothing means what it means, and evidence is no longer a proof for what is real and true. fossils.
create your own reality. It is the heart and soul of Baphomet ideology. Mystery Babylon is the seat of the Baphomet. It is the greatest throne on earth. It is the greatest throne because a man sits there claiming to be Christ, claiming to be Christ's representative, claiming to be infallible. This is the ultimate representation of the Baphomet. When man glorifies himself above Christ, above God, he represents the Baphomet. And when this glorified one demands worship, he receives that worship on behalf of Lucifer, the creator of the Baphomet. The Baphomet brings together all aspects of Lucifer's agenda. Everything that is important to Lucifer's order is contained in that figure. Control of everything in creation, dominance over everything, king of the world, the highest authority, neither male nor female, nor man nor beast, but a synthesis of all of that. This is the enlightened being to which society is moving. It is a great deception. That is Lucifer's Baphomet, and everything you see in society is geared by Lucifer to achieve the Baphomet, to instill those values in every heart and every mind. And don't think by retreating to your church that you escape the Baphomet. When your pastor collects huge amounts of money, builds new building wings, drives fancy cars, spends your money on material things, he's glorifying the Baphomet. And when you give him that money, you do the same thing. He controls you. And he goes to seminary. And the seminaries, the schools, are controlled by Baphomet. It is Baphomet philosophy. And there, they have told your pastor, the word of God does not exist. It crumbled, disappeared, gone. We don't have it. Only the old, original manuscripts were perfect, the Word of God. We don't have it. That is Baphomet speaking. When your pastor says that, when your doctrinal statement says that, that is the Baphomet speaking. The Baphomet says, absolute truth doesn't exist. You don't have it. God didn't preserve it. If your church is doing that, it is Baphomet. You can't escape Baphomet. There is no organization, there is no man, there is no system on earth that can escape the Baphomet. Only in Jesus Christ are you safe from the Baphomet. If you think cleaning the church, mowing the lawn, giving money to charity, going to women's retreats, going down for an altar call, if you think there's security in that, you're deluded. Those are rituals. Those are habits. They glorify the Baphomet. Only Christ is your assurance. Only in Him, then, are you free. Remember, the institutional religious system murdered Christ. They hated Him. And if you teach the fullness of the Gospel, every bit of it, they will hate you too, and they will put you out. So I warn you, the whole world lies in the hand of the Wicked One. That includes the institutional churches, the institutional church system, and everything associated with it. Every aspect of society. Trust no man, no system, but put your faith in Christ alone. It's offensive to everyone, it's, it's just unnatural. And look, this plane in the hangar again, the planes of existence, and uh, the fractured personality. 
of this lady in the video and this is what the spirit of antichrist is bringing with it to this world broken people remember jesus is the only true savior the only one who loves you and created you and wants the best for you and he is the only one that can make you whole and give you a true identity this thing is not healthy it is not good it is, it is full of pride and ego of sin and death this is the wrong way folks even though it looks glitzy all it is doing is making your prison cell glittery and you're not taking the way out through the Savior Jesus Christ and one day that prison door will shut and it will never open again and you'll die in your sin if we don't accept the way out which is Jesus Christ don't be fooled by this Luciferian agenda they want to take your soul to hell if you take the bait and and bite the forbidden fruit ask him to be your savior humble yourself and follow him be born again out of sin and death to new life he is the only one the center of all truth that is why they are blaspheming him time and time again do not be fooled by the liberal deception and delusion the people involved in this are on the wide path to hell if they don't repent don't follow them to death this is the false one this is the counterfeit this is the copy do not fall for the mirage the real one is on the way and it will be eternal I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Got all the dark clouds and had me blind. To be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. I think I can make it now The pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here comes the rain I've been praying for It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright Sunshiny day it's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. Bop, bop, dum, bop. Ba dum, ba dum, ba dum, ba dum. Oh, come around, there's nothing but blue sky. Anywhere you go, straight ahead, there's nothing but blue sky. It's gonna be a bright day. 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 I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way.